Welcome to this Good Friday service at Westminster Presbyterian Church. Today we stand at the foot of the cross of Jesus in recognition of his sacrifice and his suffering. It is here as we consider the passion of Christ that we somehow allow it to touch us and us to touch it on this Holy Friday. If you have not already picked up a stone, if you would do so, they are at the back of the sanctuary. And it will be an opportunity for us to symbolize our places of brokenness, the burdens that we carry, the sins that we continue to hold on to. But we'll have an opportunity to lay them at the foot of the cross, to know that we are forgiven by the grace and the extravagant love that is exhibited to us at the cross. I'm Ann Hatfield, one of the pastors here at Westminster Presbyterian Church, and joining me in worship leadership for this service is Pastor Leah Horakovic and our Director of Music Ministries, Tim Evers. As you're leaving this service, if you would like to make a donation towards the ministries of compassion and service to others that are offered uh, widely near and far from this congregation, there are offering boxes in the narthex as you exit today. And also, if you would prefer to uh, stay a little longer after this service, the labyrinth is still set up in our fellowship hall, and you can walk that as you contemplate uh, different aspects of this Passion Week that we have journeyed through and continue to await uh, the resurrection on Easter morning. There is a service tomorrow, an Easter vigil offered in our chapel at 5 p.m. will also be live streamed. This is a Teze service, and again, uh, our lingering, our waiting, our um, uh, consideration of what Christ has done for us through his passion. And then on Easter, we'll gather to celebrate the resurrection, new life and new hope and new beginnings, And we begin with a sunrise service at 6.30 in the morning, gathering in the courtyard and then processing processing around the church building to the cross and finally coming back for a communion service here in the sanctuary. There'll be two traditional services with the chancel choir and brass at 8.15 and 9.30, and then our contemporary service at 11 o'clock. And we would welcome you to any or all of those services that you are able to enter in to that wonderful day of celebration. And now let us continue with our worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Let us remember Jesus, who though rich became poor and dwelt among us, Let us remember Jesus, who prayed for the forgiveness of those who rejected him. Let us remember Jesus, who humbled himself and was obedient unto death, even death on a cross. God has exalted Jesus, who redeems us from the bondage of sin. Let us worship the Lord our God.
may be seated. Christ is our strength in suffering, our hope for salvation. We trust in the power of the Spirit's presence that is more powerful than the forces of sin or brokenness. Confident of God's love that never ends, let us join together in our unison prayer of confession. Will you join me? Merciful God, on this day of betrayal and death, we remember the times we have been part of the crowd, seeking our best interest over what is right and good. On this day of fear and denial, we remember when we have chosen the path of safety over loyalty to you. On this day of loss and despair, we remember the ways we have wandered from your presence, only to complain that we are abandoned. For all the times we have missed the mark and all the ways we have come up short, forgive us, Lord. Amen. Friends, even in times of betrayal and rebellion, even in the face of fear and denial, God's grace knows no bounds. We are offered grace from the cross. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. He was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities, Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away, he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured himself out to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors.
seated. Our second scripture lesson comes from Mark chapter 15, beginning at verse 15. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard at the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, and they offered him wine mixed with myrrh but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema samachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, He is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last. He said, truly this man was God's son.
And now let us listen to this reading called, It Was On the Friday. It was on the Friday that they ended it all. Of course, they didn't do it one by one. They weren't brave enough. Throw all stones together or throw no stones at all. They did it in crowds, in crowds where you can feel safe and lose yourself and shout things you would never shout on your own and do things you would never do if you felt the camera was watching you. It was a crowd in the church that did it and a crowd in the civil service that did it and a crowd in the street that did it and a crowd on the hill that did it. And Jesus said nothing. He took the insults and the bruises, the spit on the face, the throngs on his back, the curses in his ears. He took the sight of his friends turning away, running away, and he said nothing. Jesus let them do their worst until their worst was done. As on Friday, they ended it all and would have finished themselves had he not cried out, Father, forgive them. It was on the Friday that they ended it all and thus began God's revolution. Could we now all take the stones that we have held during the service? Stones are what people wanted to throw at Jesus during his life. Stones are also what surrounded him in the tomb, and through them he pushed his way back into life on the third day. And could we, as we remember our Lord's death, and see how he was crucified by the actions of our apathy of people like ourselves. Can we remember that it was for our sins that he died? Let us remember the wrong things in our life which burden us, threaten each other, and offend God. And after we have recognized these things, what they are, and how they affect us. Let us give them away to God, not to take them back, but to lay them down. And we can say that we know God has embraced our burdens. We can give them unto Christ. And Jesus, who is the Lamb of God, will take away the sins of the world. We'll be silent for a moment, and then we will sing the verses to this song, Were You There? And as we sing, we are invited, if we so desire, to take our stone, to come up front, and to lay it at the foot of the cross. They symbolize our burdens, our brokenness, 
our sins, let us come forward and lay them at the cross, giving thanks for what God has done for each of us and for the world.
Please join me in our responsive closing prayer. So there it is, the ugly shape of beautiful wood, rough hewn by human hands. Lord, where are you now? And there it is, a tight shut tomb, a borrowed grave, sealed with stone and silence. Lord, where are you now? And there it is, your broken body, shrouded in linen, clothed in darkness. Lord, where are you now? And somewhere stand your people, crying, though tired of crying, their eyes sore and bloodshot. They will not sleep tonight. Lord, where are you now? And out in the streets, the children have stopped their playing. The sound of music has gone sour. Even the unlikely people fidget and wonder, Lord, where are you now? And here we are saying, if only, murmuring, surely not, counting the cost for once of our carelessness and our lovelessness and our sin. Trying so vainly to gain all, we bartered you away in the transaction. We have lost the one who found us. With Peter's and Mary's of all time, we wait, for only you can tell whether we are worth rising for. <laughs>